Hello! Today's video is on DNA replication. My website, sciencewithsusanna.com, has this blank drawing to accompany the video as well as practice materials to quiz yourself. DNA replication produces two identical molecules of DNA from the original. This process occurs during S phase of interphase. One tightly packaged chromosome contains 50 to 250 million base pairs. Here's a piece of it stretched out for us so that we can study this process of DNA replication. The DNA code consists of matching nucleotides, adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine. Here's one of these millions of base pairs. Base pairs are bonded together with hydrogen bonds. DNA is oriented with anti-parallel strands. One end is oriented five prime to three prime, and the complementary strand is oriented three prime to five prime. To understand what five prime and three prime means, let's look at the part of DNA's backbone that's called the deoxyribose sugar. The carbons are numbered one to five, starting with the carbon that binds the base. Let's use adenine as an example. The rest of the carbons are numbered clockwise from this one. So here is the five prime carbon. Thymine binds with adenine. And the nitrogenous base is also bound to the first carbon on its deoxyribose sugar, like this. Both complementary strands are attached to phosphates, but notice that one of the strands has its five prime carbon starting out. And the complementary strand on the other side has the three prime carbon sticking up. DNA helicase is the enzyme that unzips the molecule by breaking the base pair hydrogen bonds. Helicase targets the hydrogen bonds and unzips the DNA in both directions. This point of initial unzipping occurs at the origin of replication. The helicases continue unzipping the nucleotides to break apart the hydrogen bonds, opening up what is called a replication bubble. So that's step one. RNA polymerase, an exquisite nanomachine, adds a few bases, called an RNA primer, to both strands. That is step two. Step three is when DNA polymerase adds nucleotides in the five to three direction. It can only add matching nucleotides if there are already nearby ones to hold on to. That's why you need to have the RNA primer, since RNA polymerase can add complementary nucleotides without other nearby nucleotides to hang on to. So DNA polymerase adds these nucleotides continuously in the 5 to 3 direction from the origin of replication, following the ever-moving helicase. On the complementary strand, DNA polymerase adds nucleotides in the 5 to 3 direction continuously away from the origin of replication, again following the helicase as it breaks hydrogen bonds. DNA polymerase is also able to edit and correct any mistakes it makes while matching nucleotides from the pool of free nucleotides within the nucleus. The two new DNA molecules made in this process will therefore end up with one old strand of DNA and a brand new strand. This is described as semi-conservative replication. Since DNA can only be added by DNA polymerase in the 5 to 3 direction, more RNA primers will be needed in certain parts of the replication bubbles. And while the DNA polymerase still goes in the 5 to 3 direction, the overall movement is still away from the origin of replication toward the moving helicase. Although, because it has to work backwards, it lags behind its complementary strand. We see this same process on the other side of the molecule as well. Wherever nucleotides cannot be added continuously in the 5 to 3 direction, many more RNA primers will have to be set down, and then DNA polymerase can add nucleotides in the five to three direction, while still ultimately working its way toward the helicase that is separating more of the molecule. These small fragments formed by the working backward replication are called Okasaki fragments. These are on the lagging strand, so named because it is a little slower to form 
since it has to work backwards. Compare this with the continuous leading strand, which, with just one primer, can happily add nucleotides and follow the helicase as it breaks apart hydrogen bonds. Once again, we see the lagging strand must add nucleotides in the 5 to 3 direction from the origin of replication. But, since it requires multiple RNA primers and has to work backwards, it is a little slower behind the helicase. In step 4, one of the many types of DNA polymerase replaces the RNA primers with DNA. Still always working in the 5 to 3 direction. In the last step, DNA ligase, yet another nanomachine, seals all the fragments together. Let's watch this here. Replace the RNA with DNA, then seal up with ligase. Every primer gets replaced and sealed. Another amazing nanomachine called topoisomerase is constantly making little clips in the phosphate sugar backbone to relieve the twisting strain that occurs as helicase unzips DNA. It then reseals up all these little clips once the strain on the helix has shifted to another spot and clips a new place to relieve this torsional strain. The final product is an identically coded DNA molecule and these two new molecules remain attached at a DNA sequence called the centromere. These identical DNA molecules are sister chromatids that will separate during mitosis. Now spend a few minutes reviewing this information. Once you think you're ready, use my Quizlet flashcards to practice and review. See you in the next video.